What is up, team? Chuck with Traders War Room, and I'm back at you with another video. This is your Thirsty Thursday video, guys, and I got a great one for you. We're going to talk about you, stocks, charts, hot news, all things to get a plan in motion so we can go kill the market tomorrow and look towards the future in the market, guys. But what I need you to do right now is hit that like, share, subscribe button, and I need you to come along with us on a journey and check the description tab out, guys. I got tons of hyperlinks right there with tools and tidbits to make you a more successful trader. If that sounds good and you're ready to rock it with me, then all I got to say to you is follow me and let's go to war together. Traders War Room, let's get it. All right, team, welcome back. This is the legal disclaimer. This is not financial advice. The content is for entertainment and education purposes only. You're responsible for every decision you make. We want you to have fun, use caution, always go to war. Check out some of our links right there. We got the Discord website and our instant message alert link, guys, right there so that you can check it out. Services we provide, guys, I'm not going to beat this up. We have free and paid services, something truly for everyone, every type of trader, and every type of budget. Guys, you can go to traderswarroom.com and explore everything we have to offer right there. Stay tuned at the end of this for some hot TWR products and services and upcoming classes. We truly want to grow, learn, and share together. And of course, we want to make some money. Now, guys, with that said and done, let's go ahead and hop into what we want to get into, guys. And we are going to go ahead and look at the charts. We're going to start off with what? Of course, we're going to look at a SPY, guys. And I'm trying a new strategy. Um, full disclosure, I got kind of beat up this week, all right? Um, my strategy that I normally use that has been effective for the past few months, extremely effective, is not working in this current market uh, condition. So what ends up happening is we have to go back to the rule book, okay? We have to take a piece of humble pie and we have to look at it and kind of be like, you know what? Things aren't working and we can't just go continuing on in something that's not working. So I tell you guys, and I preach this all the time, we have to always be constantly refining and constantly developing to in order to make ourselves better, okay? The end goal is always to be better prepared today than we were yesterday. And that comes with training and that comes with planning. So I got a new strategy that still falls in line with my normal strategy of utilizing moving averages. But I've got a couple different ones. Instead of using the EMA, I'm using the MA. And I got three up here to give me a little bit more of a basis. And I'm using a further out chart looking for those swing trades. So I'm using the four hour chart right here. And we're gonna go ahead and look at SPY and see what happened, guys. If you notice, SPY's been on a roll, okay? Definitely, I've been bearish on SPY. And I'll show you why I've been bearish on SPY because when you look at it on a wider uh, scale, we come out of this consolidation zone here, right? And it tanks, right? And we go ahead and we got the gap down and then we just continue on down, right? And when we look at this, we put a line here. Let's go ahead and take a line and look at this. We go ahead and get a line and we get a bottom level right around, you know, 365. We went a little bit further, but we want some meat and potatoes, so we want some substance, right? So we got about 365. And then we look at all of our other levels where we start to get consolidation. We consolidate here, we get some touches, we come back up, we get some consolidation here, we got touches, right? And then we have to face the fact, okay, we bounce out of this area here at about this 387, and we break, and we go ahead and we start breaking this top level right here to the upside. So we have to respect this uptrend that's going on. Now, am I still a little bearish and concerned long-term in the stock market? Absolutely, okay. Inflation is a concern. Jobless claims just came out. We still are not looking great, okay. Recession, you keep hearing that buzzword. So there's a lot going on that still has me bearish. However, we have to respect this current momentum that we got going on. And for right now, we're going to just play the momentum. Now, a couple different things. We have this level here where we broke out. This 393 level is definitely important, okay. This will start acting as a support level because if you look, we zone in here. We started kind of consolidating pretty good past couple of days at this level and we went ahead and broke out. Now we go ahead and go out a little bit and we push up and we look at this little shelf right here, right? We want to get this shelf here. This is about 401. So potentially I'm going to color these different so we can pay attention to these. So we're looking at, we'll go ahead and color that red and we'll color this one red. So we got some triggers. Basically we're getting ourselves some triggers here. All right. And so what we're talking about with this is we're going to go ahead and start making some decisions. All right. All right. So if SPY 
can can hold this level inside here, hold this line here. We have to respect the uptrend and the likelihood of us coming up here to at least test this 401 is highly likely, okay? If we end up closing or opening below our moving averages and below this line, we're probably looking for a retest down here at about this line here, this 388, which would be great because we definitely have some 388 puts and some 390 puts, and those would be fantastic to get some of that downward momentum so that we can come out of those tomorrow for cash. However, if we stay in this range, the likelihood of us pushing up to 401 is definitely high and we need to respect that. So we got to follow the momentum. It'll be very telling if we get this, if we still continue on this uptrend here and our volume comes in now. Something that tells me that we may be cooling off is look at this volume. Okay, boom, 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 our volume is spiking, spiking. And we start to decline a little bit. Even though we're going up, we're starting to decline a little bit here, right? And we're not coming up as great, as strong. And now we're starting to decline, which is telling me that we're losing a little bit of steam. Our uh, MACD is kind of our hill or convergence and divergence hill is starting to cool off a little bit. Just tell me we could potentially be looking for the cool down period, which would be pushing us back down here and we would start testing this level of support. Now we got resistance up here. We already broke through this resistance. So this becomes our consolidation range period and we got support down here. So these are our periods that we're looking for. We stay above our middle, our 50-50. We got to respect the top level. We're looking for calls to the upside, right? We end up falling below this 50-50. We got to respect the level. We're looking for puts down to this level for potential hit and see if we can hold that level on a downward trend. So that's SPY. We definitely are looking at that coming into today or excuse me, tomorrow. And we're looking out into next week as well. Let's go into Meta. All right, I'm not going to explain this as much. All these stocks kind of fall into the SPY. So the big bulk of the understanding was with SPY. We're going to go ahead and look at these now. Meta definitely came down pretty hard, okay? Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Meta uh, comes in and we start to consolidate a little bit down here. I do think that we got some downward trend on here. Look, Mac, these about to cross on the four-hour chart. I think that we could be pretty safe to say that we're probably going to start coming about, you know, we'll call about right here, about 168. You know, between 170 and 165 will be a zone where we come down to test this level here at the bottom to see if we have the support to go ahead and hold it. Now, what's concerning is that we went ahead and went down and we came back up, but we stayed down on the bottom portion of the full thickness candle. So the likelihood of us opening up lower is high and we probably, like I said, go down to test this. So definitely look for Meta. You know, tomorrow we'll probably be looking at puts at the opening bell and seeing how everything happens. We'll have to pay attention to... Um, pre-market to see how it moves and shakes, but that's what's normally going to happen with this particular one. We're at least going to come down here and test this bottom level because it already came down once, retract a little bit, and we still stayed on the bullish side of it. The moving averages are pushing us down, so we're going to open up lower and come down and we test this area, see if we can hold. NVDA. NVDA is is uh, is interesting right now. I didn't expect this big push, especially with this chip back thing still in kind of limbo. We saw a little bit of a downward trend towards the end of this day. Um, I think this kind of uh, falls in line with uh, what kind we talked about with Meta a little bit. Notice in here, we got this consolidation period right here, and then we close down. If we start to close below our 50-50 moving average, it's right here, we're using the eight. If we close full candlestick below this, I'll say a five or a 15 minute chart, likelihood of us continuing to the downside, at least to go test our next shelf level, which would be about right here, 170, is highly probable, okay? If we can stay above this, we might be looking for another leg up. And basically all we do to find out our potential targets, we take this, 170, 177, and we do the difference. 50-50 of that's about a three to four dollar move to the upside that we could see. Now being cautious because it's Friday, going into people not wanting to carry cash on hand, definitely plays into that as well. Apple, same kind of concept here. Apple cooling down a little bit. We got 154, kind of bearish at the end of it. Again, we're looking for an opening, seeing how it does in pre-market. Definitely plausible coming into opening lower if we keep the steam. And it'd be about 152 that we'd be looking at, okay, before we start to test the rejection. So see how it plays. If we start to cross in pre-market to the downside on our moving averages on a five or 15 minute chart, we're going to go ahead and uh, play the put game. And we're going to ride this thing down a couple dollars to about 152, 151 maybe before we start looking for the reversal and rejection and see if we can hold the bottom levels. AXP has earnings coming up, and this is a financial sector. Definitely booming. Um, I don't play this one very often. I don't really pay attention to, but I am currently right now. I do like this. We kind of got some odd price action going on. It's not really consolidating. It's kind of being a little choppy. You know, you got your down spikes up. Kind of finished red for the day. Looking for this MACD. Okay, volume was, was uh, elevated today. And, you know, we kind of finished a little bit a week. So we're paying attention to this. 
if this follows the general market, we're probably going to open up lower on this one and see, depending on what happens with their earnings, will be a major catalyst for whether this moves or not. So we'll definitely pay attention. We're looking for this. If we get the cross on the MACD to the downside and our moving averages are, are shorter ones, start closing our longer ones, we're looking for those puts to the downside, riding it for a two-leg strategy. <clears throat> Amazon. Man, Amazon's just been killing it, dude. I have a 107 put. And I need this thing to come down to about right here. I don't think we're going to get there, okay? Um, we've got to put back here where we thought it was going to come down, and it just kept going up with the general market as well. I do think that we have a little bit of a too much run here, and we're probably going to come down a little bit. I got a feeling that going out, going for a little bit of a cool down, probably the 118, 119 puts going in the next week is definitely plausible for a cool down period. I think we cool down a little bit, coming on down. We retest test this area, see if we can hold this support, and then we come back up. Because basically right now, what we're looking at is we got demand zone down here, and we're starting to develop the supply zone. Okay, all we need is a rejection from up here, and this will start giving us our supply zone to give us our top. All right, made some good money off of Google today. Now, I can't do this on a four-minute chart because of the split. It's kind of acting kind of funky. So we're going to go ahead and go to the 30-minute chart just because to make it simple. We're liking Google. Um, we went ahead with puts. We noticed that we were consolidating pretty good. And we went ahead with, with puts and we were able to make some money. We got some runners. We're looking to cash out those tomorrow. So this is still, I think that we stay, we start consolidating at the bottom level. And this is basically gonna follow the market essentially. Um, if the market is strong, this is gonna push. And if the market is weak, this is going to either stay stagnant with a consolidation period because this is a lower level where people think enough is enough or this will go down a little bit, maybe maybe a couple of ticks, you know, another dollar or two down to the downside. Same concept with the, with its little partner, the Google. Now we did both of these trades, never traded these before, so these were successes. It's the G-O-O-G and the G-O-O-G-L, okay? Two different, two different uh, parts of the same company, same concept with both of them, and that's what we're looking for. BLO, energy's been getting beat, but however, we started seeing a nice little wedge up. Look at this pattern that's uh, forming right here, okay? We like these, right? From here, from a shelf down here, looking up. And then we go ahead and draw another line from where we broke right here. We went ahead and broke. We got a nice wedge. Okay, here's the broadening, right? And then we start to get tight when we when we find our bottom. We start to get tight. And we start this railroading up to the, to the top part right here. Okay, we're closing the gap. We're going to make a decision. We're either going to push to the upside, push to the downside. You know, this has been beat up pretty well, so we'll pay attention to see how this plays. We're definitely looking for some crosses. We got the cross here. This is a good indicator for position to go long on this. So we'll see what this does in the pre-market. But the idea is, at least right now, is that when we're looking at VLO and some of the other energy plays, we're looking to go long potentially for a limited time because we think a lot of them beat up too much. So get some relief. AMD, very similar to NVDA. Um, this is cooling down a little bit. Definitely been on a run. When we look at it on the four-hour chart, kind of like NVDA, same, same concept. Okay, boom, 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 we went up. We, and AMD is a lot of times, look at the 76 all the way up to 91. Okay, this is a lot of movement for AMD, all right? A little too much too soon, in my opinion. I think AMD comes back down. And if we start to go out into next week or maybe two weeks out from now, and we start to go into, uh, you know, maybe we go into the, you know, the high 80s, you know, let's let's go about right here in the middle, about 86, 85, something like that. I think that's a safe bet for at least a retest of the bottom to see if we're ready to continue to the upside. And let's go ahead and go XOM, same concept with VLO, VLO, okay? We do like this for continuation to the upside. We think that's been beat up. And when we look at it from a broader spectrum, we're starting to move in the right direction to the upside. Kind of a consolidation pattern here. We took a little cool down period. I think we pushed to the upside and we go to retest this, this period up here. About 90 bucks, maybe 91 bucks would be my assessment on a strong market day pushing to the upside. We can't push to the upside we can't break. Breaking right here would be the 89, okay? This would be where we'd be looking to break for a push to the upside. If we can't break that and hold above there, then we'll probably come back down and we'll probably stay in this little area and probably cool off a little bit. I'd say 85, 84 bucks would be a good assessment to for a cool down period. <clears throat> Verizon has earnings up too. Verizon definitely tanked. So we're looking for this to probably consolidate a little bit, see what the earnings gives us uh, tomorrow when the bell rings. But, you know, Verizon has some room that can continue to the downside. However, you know, it tanked a little bit. We'll see what it does. If I had to bet, I think we get a little bit of a bump with Verizon because we haven't been this low on Verizon for a while and it's popular. However, we do have some more room we can go down, but we'll just see how the earnings play when the bell rings tomorrow and the general market overall too. The market's strong, this will probably swing strong as well. If the market's weak, we'll probably see a little bit of a weaker thing from, uh, from the rising. Snap, oh, we're getting here. And we're gonna go ahead and finish up with Snap. Snap was a major fail on my part. Um, 
this one, you know, it's a it was a lotto. Okay, we took it. It pushed it pushed extremely high. We were you know bullish on this one, and then it just tanked. Basically, Snap was like we had the worst quarter early earnings that we've ever had. Advertising dollars are down. All this negative news, and so down we go. Um, I don't know how much further this can go. The idea of this getting the ten dollars is you know I can't even fathom that. But these things that are struggling so bad, you know, it could be on its way to being bought out by another giant social media icon to come in or they talked about doing a share repurchase so if i had my bet i would think we see a little bit of resurgence on snap coming up a little bit but definitely not good news and we'll have to see how this plays out at the bell tomorrow and i like we're going to do one more american airlines interest in american airlines definitely cooled down today but it kind of found it found a bottom okay so we'll see how the airlines trade tomorrow you know paying attention to dal and ual also the etf jets and we'll see what happens with it on a strong market we probably can bounce a little bit but as of right now if we're still keeping our crosses to the downside and our volume is increasing to the put side we have no choice but to go ahead and think that another leg down is possible which would push us at about 13 maybe even lower to the end of 12. so we're paying attention to this very carefully all right guys now that's the main part of the video so if you don't want to listen to the promos go ahead and shut off right now and i appreciate you guys coming along for the journey but right now we're going to talk about some products and services that we have at traders war room coming up guys we got a class this sunday okay 24 july we're going to teach you how to day trade trends off of multiple time frames guys if you're not trading off of multiple time frames and when we're talking about that we're using the four hour chart the day chart the 15 minute chart the five minute chart and you're taking all that information you're compiling together and you're making educated decisions then this class is for you um, our subject matter expert our instructor is going to come in here he's going to teach you the day trading fundamentals how to find day trading trends and how to trade for gains off of multiple time frames fifteen dollars a pop you cannot beat the content that we're going to give you and Every person that purchases the class gets the recording. I hope to see you there 24 July, this Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Next class we got going on is one of my favorite ones. We're gonna teach you how to use price action for directional day and swing trading. Fantastic class. We're not just hitting the day trading side of the house, but we're gonna hit the swing trading side of the house as well. 7 August at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, 15 bucks gets you a seat and you get to keep the recording and you're gonna learn exactly what price action is how to find direction for your trades and entering and exiting for profit off of the price action in the direction that you wanna go. Fantastic class for anybody that is struggling in this current market and utilizes price action for signals for going long or short and in the direction that you wanna go. Definitely hope to see you there. And as always, we just want you guys to get the best type of classes for the best prices out there. And we think we provide that. And finally, thank you. We hope you come trade with the bulls at Traders War Room. We want you to check and see what we offer on our website and social medias. You can check all the, the current social medias and at Traders War Room and find our videos and texts and pushes that we got. You can also check our website. We got the Discord out there. We got the Traders War Room website with all the information and we got our instant messaging alert. Remember guys, we look at the stock market like a war zone, stocks and sector. Those are our battles. We do it together as a team from all the staff at Traders War Room and our official mascot, Rocket. We want to say thank you for coming along with us on the journey. And if you're ready, follow me and let's go to war together, team. Later. Have a great night. Let's go out and make some money tomorrow.